Hi, this is Ira Gorlick, and this uh, lecture on spontaneous order is going to go into a little more detail with problems with spontaneous order. I have three specific problems that I want to go into a little more detail and get some more discussion on. So, first problem I have with spontaneous order is that at its most fundamental, most order is based on constructed order. So, even if we look at the, um, the example of um, the driving or the walking, there is a certain amount of constructed order being nice to people and who you defer to so that, that we really don't do much that is actually totally spontaneous. There is some order, some what I call meta-communication or meta-order meta that exists. In fact, I like that term, meta-order. That, that's neat. I'm going to have to use that. A meta-order that sort of overlays all of this. Um, in fact, I may even do a whole other slide on meta-order. And even if there is a difference between spontaneous order and constructed order, the boundary that separates the two is somewhat vague. And then thirdly, and, and very in fact more, more importantly, is the idea of recognizing injustice or bad actors. So we can talk about the economic effects of, net, of, of um, spontaneous order. But remember, this is, this is a class on telecommunications law, on net neutrality, and on legal issues. So... Can spontaneous order help us figure out um, injustice or determine what is a bad actor? So let me go into a little more detail now in terms of this first problem. Um, is constructed order and, and spontaneous order even a thing? Um, I write here the distinction between spontaneous and constructed order dissolves upon rigorous inspection. Any action by any individual or firm in the market looks on close-up view like a constructed order and, and, and or an artificial order. But take three steps back, and from a distance, the same action looks like part of a bustling experimental give and take of spontaneous order. Again, go back to thinking about people walking on the street. You know, on its face, it might look, you know, okay, you don't run into a person with a stroller. You know, but looking, looking at it from a high level, it looks like everything is spontaneous. Um, if a company adopts a new policy for handling paperwork or manufacturing some project product, that policy, while an example of spontaneous order from Hayek's standpoint, that, that the government isn't telling them how to handle the paperwork, um, that they're doing it on their own, and from a high level it looks like spontaneous order, but to the worker implementing it, it's constructed order. Uh, and here, consider an exchange between Judge Richard Posner and economist Donald Boudreau in the New York Union Journal, New York Union Journal of Law and Liberty. And by the way, Judge Posner is a Chicago School of Economics and very important uh, player in telecommunications law. And we're going to talk a lot about him in a series of lectures on telecommunications law. Posner commented that Hayek's belief in spontaneous order was in considerable tension with his great admiration for the Constitution of the United States, because the Constitution was a written plan of government formulated by experts, a constituted order. So see that? I mean, in terms of if, if we support the Constitution, that's a constructed order, not a spontaneous order. But Boudreau disagreed. The Constitution's authors did not seek to create all or even most law new, de, law de novo, or to replace wholesale one set of laws with another. Rather, they incorporated the evolved common law rooted in English experience and modified by more recent experience in the colonies. So see, this is where this, this thing between constructed order and, and spontaneous order sort of breaks down in the sense that, yes, the, 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 the American experiment is a, as an experiment in spontaneous order, but it's rooted in constructed order of English common law. So can both Posner and Boudreau be right? The Constitution was rationally constructed, if looked up close, but it was also the product of spontaneous order, seen in the context of the history of Anglo-American common law. One cannot distinguish between spontaneous constructed orders on the, on, that, on the basis that Boudreau suggests, that spontaneous orders incorporate the ideas learned from the past experience, because no constructed order is entirely brand new. You know, and I think this particular statement is, is, is fairly important. If you look at my class here, the, the class I'm creating is an example of spontaneous order. Nobody's telling me how to put this class together. Yet, this class is based on 
a history that I have in putting slides together and videos and, and how best to, to come across. And there's, there's, there's a real constructed order in terms of the, the audio, that, in terms of how this video is put together, how this class is put together. So it, it's hard for me to distinguish between spontaneous and constructed order at, at, its, at, its, at, at its most detailed. No system of law, Hyatt admits, has ever been designed as a whole, and even the various attempts at codification could do no more than systematize an existing body of law, and in doing so, supplement it or eliminate inconsistencies. Again, there's, there's no totally con constructed order and no totally spontaneous order. In other words, the partially different rules that compete in the spontaneous order are necessarily constructed ones. And because Hayek incorporates these elements of constructivism into his account of spontaneous order, he ends up making it impossible to discriminate between a spontaneous and a constructed order. So the important thing here is that one can can understand spontaneous order, can can understand why he says it, why Hayek says it, why it makes sense, but we have to be very careful about taking it to any extremes. If the observer draws a circle narrowly around a single transaction, a single reform proposal, a single firm, a single state, or a single nation, then the order appears constructed. But take a step back and look at the transaction in the context of the multitude of interactions between individuals and firms, the systems of rules as a whole, and even the most radical state-implemented reform is just a tiny experimental particle in the flux of spontaneous order. I mean, you can even look at the Affordable Care Act, the Obamacare, as being spontaneous order. I mean, there's been nothing like it before, and it is 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 by definition, um, is spontaneous order. Yet there is a lot of constructed order in terms of forcing people to have um, health insurance. So this is this is the problem one has when looking at at spontaneous order as a whole. The dif difference between constructed and spontaneous orders, in fact, begins to look like the difference between microevolution and macroevolution in biology. Whatever use that distinction might have in some context, it is not a distinction in principle. All evolution is microevolution. Macroevolution is just an accumulation of microevolutionary changes over the course of generations. Now, it'd be interesting to have an academic discussion is that whether constructed order is the foundation and, and is the microevolution and spontaneous order is the macro or the other way around. Um, I'm not sure it'd be, it, 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 it affects what we do about net neutrality, but it is an interesting discussion. Hayek exploited his concept's flexibility when he said that deliberate efforts to improve the existing system by laying down new rules were actually consistent with the principle of spontaneous order. It remains true that a system of rules as a whole does not owe a structure to the design of planners. So he's sort of getting around this problem. But but if you do, if you look at Hayek's readings, you'll see or writings, you'll see that he had he really struggled with this. The phrase as a whole is doing all the work here. As a whole, no order is constructed. The term as a whole here represents Hayek's taking a convenient and unwarranted step back to look at a system through a lens so wide that anything, no matter how rationally constructed, can still qualify as part of spontaneous order. So that's this problem. I'm going to go into problem number two in the next lecture. Thanks.